In this lecture, we want to develop the concept of stress invariance. So I want to remind you that uh, in the previous uh, lecture, we talked about extremizing the normal stress or finding the stationary points. And uh, hopefully you recall that we arrived at the familiar eigenvalue problem. So what we're looking at is, here's our eigenvalue problem, sigma ij minus lambda. That's the eigenvalue times uh, delta ij times nj, where nj is going to be the eigenvector. So uh, remember that what we're trying to solve for is the lambda nj pa uh, pairs that, that make this um, equation true. And when we do, then that lambda value is one of the principal stresses. Also remember, I'm just previewing what we're going to uh, come back to. The principal stress is the maximum normal stress on whatever plane it comes out as. That maximum normal stress will not change depending on the coordinate system that we choose to represent the stress in. So we're going to come back to that, and that's how we actually uh, uh, develop the idea of an invariant. So, so keep that in mind as we proceed forward. So how do we go about uh, looking at this problem? So hopefully you remember from linear algebra. So from linear algebra, how do we? What can we say about the problem? Well, we can say that. Uh, this equation is true if and only if the quantity in parentheses, if that determinant is equal to zero. So we require then that the determinant of, oops, I shouldn't, I don't want to indicate a double determinant here. Just say the determinant of sigma ij minus lambda delta ij is equal to zero. Um, that, that leads to the above equation. So let's go ahead and write that out. And when I'm doing determinants, I typically just write them out longhand, at least for these these three by three matrices. So I'm just all I'm doing right now is writing the the terms of this uh, quantity in parentheses. Okay, so we just about done. All right, and then we take the determinant of that, and remember that it's equal to zero. So the first quantity, uh, obviously, there's multiple ways that we can take the determinant. Uh, I'm going to use my way since I'm the one giving the lecture. Uh, I just go along the top row. Uh, so, right, and then we multiply that times sigma two two minus lambda times sigma three three minus lambda minus sigma. 2, 3 squared. And then I'm going to just go vertically here because it's a little easier to show. This is then minus sigma 1, 2. And the determinant of the submatrix looks like uh, sigma 1, 2 times sigma 3, 3 minus lambda uh, minus sigma 1, 3, sigma 2, 3. And then the final term is going to be plus sigma 1, 3 times the quantity uh, sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 3 minus um, sigma 1, 3 times sigma 2, 2 minus lambda. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of algebra here to be done. Um, I'm assuming this is a graduate class, so I'm hoping you can handle your algebra. Uh, we're just going to uh, basically simplify. Uh, and you can see you're going to have a lambda cubed term in there, so that actually is the first term. We end up with lambda cubed minus lambda squared. Again, this is just you know all basic sort of algebra two or algebra one even. Um, this quantity is sigma one one plus sigma two two plus sigma three three, all right? Plus lambda times sigma one one sigma two two plus sigma two two sigma three three plus sigma one one sigma three three. You can hopefully see the symmetry in all of this a little bit. Uh, minus 
sigma 1, 2 squared minus sigma 1, 3 squared minus sigma 2, 3 squared. And I have one more term I'm going to uh, have to write down. And that's going to be uh, a minus, and this is just the, and the entire quantity, minus sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 3, 3. And I encourage you to go back and check. Make sure you get the same answer as I get here. Sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 3 squared minus sigma 2, 2, sigma 1, 3 squared minus sigma 3, 3, sigma 1, 2 squared plus 2 times sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3, sigma 2, 3. And remember that whole thing equals 0. Okay, so this equation is commonly referred to as the characteristic equation. Okay. Now let's go, let's think about what it tells us. So let's just say recall that whatever solution for lambda that above equation gives us, that lambda is a principal stress. What does that imply? Well, that means that lambda will be independent of the coordinate system that we choose. Okay, if, if that equation, let's back up, that equation still has to give us the same values for all three values for lambda, it has to be the exact same equation, no matter what coordinate system we use. So the only way that that can happen, so this implies, is, is that the coefficients, whoops, coefficients, on uh, lambda squared, lambda, and then the one term. So that would be the coefficient here on the lambda squared term is this quantity. On the lambda term is this quantity here. And then on the, on the, the one term is just this quantity. So those coefficients, if, that's, if, if this is true, they must be independent of the coordinate system. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that those quantities, they are invariant. Okay, so if, if, if you pick any stress tensor that you want, and I look at the, those quantities, let's pick the first one just for an example. If I look at sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3, right? That's the trace of the, of the stress sensor. And I would go ahead and I can rotate that to any other place in space. Of course, it'll change the components, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3. What this equation tells us is that that quantity, the sum of those three terms, doesn't change uh, regardless of how we rotate it, okay? So as a result, we can go ahead and define these three invariants. So we define then these three invariants. Uh, in stress. Okay, and the first one we'll just call I1. And that's going to be equal to sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3, right? So that's invariant. That doesn't, that quantity never changes no matter how we rotate it. So that, remember, is just, that's the trace of sigma, if you like. And it's actually related to the pressure. It's three times the hydrostatic pressure. Okay. If you want to write that in index form, hopefully you're becoming more comfortable with that now. That's just the sum of the diagonals, and we can write that as sigma ii. Okay, similarly for the second invariant, I'm just, uh, maybe I can go up so I can copy it down from 
uh, from there. Let's try it. See if I can write it down without running into too much trouble. That's sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, uh, plus sigma 2, 2, sigma 3, 3, plus sigma 1, 1, sigma 3, 3, minus sigma 1, 2 squared, minus sigma 1, 3 squared, minus sigma 2, 3 squared. So let me go down just a little bit. Um, if you the what this whoops, let me erase that real quick. What this quantity actually means, and this is actually an important quantity uh, for plasticity. So let's just say this is going to be important uh, for plasticity. And that's, and we'll talk a little bit more in a, in the in a following lecture, and it's when we're looking at deviatoric stress. Okay, so I'll come back to that a little bit. If you want to write this in index notation, I'll save you the trouble. It's a little bit more challenging to come up with the right index notation for this, but it can be written simply as one half sigma i i sigma j j minus sigma i j sigma ij okay so pretty straightforward and then our final term i can't scroll up probably and write all of this so you just have to trust that i'm writing the right thing down but it's just sigma one one sigma two two sigma three three minus sigma one one sigma two three squared minus sigma two two uh, sigma one three squared minus sigma three three uh, sigma 1, 2 squared plus 2 times sigma 1, 2 times sigma 1, 3 times sigma 2, 3. And I'll save you the, the hassle of having to go back and convince yourself of this, but that's actually the determinant of the stress tensor. And if you wanted to write that in index notation, I don't recommend computing the de determinant like this, but you could. You can use the permutation tensor epsilon ijk and write that that determinant is then epsilon i1, epsilon j2, sorry, not epsilon, these are sigmas, and then sigma uh, k3. Okay? So if we do that then, so if we use those terms, then the characteristic equation. then becomes written in terms of these invariants, and it looks like lambda cubed minus I1 lambda squared plus I2 lambda. How about I write it correctly? Plus I2 times lambda minus I3 equals 0. OK? So that's what our new characteristic equation looks like in terms of stress and variance I1, I2, and I3. And if we want to solve for lambdas, the three lambdas, this is the equation that we have to solve.